name is Nicole. I'm a tea writer and educator and I'm here to help you learn more about tea. One of the questions that I get a lot from people who are new to tea is asking kind of what stuff do they need in order to brew gong fu. Um, it can be really intimidating. There's a lot of information online. Not all of it adds up exactly. Um, so I thought I would take a stab at kind of simplifying it and explaining what you really need to get started, as well as some of my tips for selecting your teaware. I've already made a video comparing the differences between gong fu and western style brewing. I'll go ahead and link that in the description below in case you want to check that out. Sometimes I think the worst people you could ask for advice on what teaware you need are people who are really into tea. Um, we love tea stuff. Uh, you can tell by the shelf behind me full of teaware here. We love collecting and buying new things. But when you're first getting started with tea, that's not really the best approach in my opinion. So what I recommend is really keeping it as basic as you possibly can. Get yourself a gaiwan. You want it to be porcelain. I don't recommend clay. Typically clay gaiwans, especially ones you might find on Amazon or eBay, are lower quality. And also the clay absorbs the tea over time. And so you're just going to kind of muddle your flavors if you're using a clay gaiwan to brew all of your different teas. Um, so porcelain is really your best option because it's inert, it doesn't change the taste of the tea, it's also not going to be super expensive. When you're shopping for a gaiwan, I do recommend keeping an eye on the volume of the gaiwan that you're purchasing, not just kind of the look of it or the material. Um, generally, you want to stick to about 100 to 150 milliliters. Um, anything larger than that is honestly, unless you have very long fingers like I do, it's going to be hard to manipulate and pour with a larger gaiwan. Um, that's definitely something if you wanted to get down the road, if you want to serve larger groups, that's something you can do once you've kind of gotten the hang of it, but I don't recommend starting with a larger gaiwan. Um, smaller than that, I find is also hard to do, um, especially if you're brand new to it. So I think 100 to 150 milliliters is kind of like a good sweet spot to stick to. There are a lot of other vessels that you can use for gung fu, um, like clay teapots or shibori dashis, um, but I really think that those are a little bit more advanced and they're not necessarily going to serve you the best when you're new to tea. The one other thing that is essential would be a teacup. This does not have to be fancy. You can get it from the dollar store. You can get teacups from a lot of different places. Um, you really don't have to invest a lot of money. If you find a cup that's about the same capacity as your gaiwan, that's literally all you need. Um, there's lots of other things that are great to have, fun to have, nice to have, but they're not necessities. A gaiwan and a teacup are really all you need to get started with gung fu brewing. Now that we have our basics, let's talk about some of the things that are nice to have. This is a sharing pitcher, or you might also see it referred to as a gung dao bay. You'll see me use this a lot on our episodes of Husband Tea Torture. Basic idea is that you pour your tea into here in order to make it easier to serve multiple people. Um, if you're pouring with a gaiwan across several cups, the tea is going to taste just slightly different for as you go along. So the last cup that you're pouring into is actually going to get slightly stronger tea than the first cup that you started pouring with. Um, so the idea of a fairness cup is to make it fair so that everyone gets tea of kind of the same strength. This is especially helpful if you have a cup that is smaller than your gaiwan, um, as you can pour your tea into here and then just refill as you need to. If you're using a gung dao bay, it can also help to have a strainer. Um, so this is just like a really inexpensive stainless steel strainer. You can get them on Amazon really inexpensively. Um, and basically you just put that on your gung dao bay to strain the tea through. This is especially helpful if you have a tea that has a lot of broken pieces. Um, this will help to kind of catch those and keep it from getting into your tea. Um, I personally don't mind stuff in my tea, but if I'm serving other people who aren't familiar with loose leaf tea, that can be kind of off-putting for them. So strainers are definitely helpful for that. The next thing on our list of nice to haves is a tea tray. Um, I personally like having one because I tend to spill a lot and that kind of makes it much easier to clean up. I'm not getting tea everywhere. 
these can definitely be pricier and harder to find um, than some other types of teaware might be, um, but you don't necessarily have to break the bank. Um, this one I think cost me about 50 or $60 and I bought it a really long time ago. Um, so it definitely is something that like you can invest in and have for a while. That being said, I do have some advice for when you're shopping for one. You wanna make sure that your tea tray is not completely made out of wood. Usually you'll have like a top part that is wood um, and then sometimes this is like a thing that can be removed or there's a tray underneath. I personally prefer the ones with a tray underneath. Um, so like this one has a plastic tray that I can pull out. Um, and the big advantage with this is that you don't have water sitting inside of your tea tray. Where the ones that are all wood, eventually no matter what you do, that's going to compromise the integrity of the wood construction. Um, I previously had one that was like that um, and I put it down on my bed for a moment and as luck would have it, that's the very moment that the wood decided to leak and the entire contents of the tea tray wound up on my mattress. Um, definitely a big mess and took a while to dry. So that's something that always kind of gave me pause on using that kind of tea tray. Um, I wish somebody had told me back then that I should avoid those. Um, so I'm gonna tell you guys, definitely try to get one that has a tray underneath uh, because that will really help make sure that your tea tray lasts you for a much longer time. Another nice to have when you're brewing gunk fu is tea pets. Um, you guys know that I love tea pets. I've made a few, quite a few videos about them. Tea pets are often made out of the same clay that teapots would be. And the idea is that when you pour your tea on the tea pet, the clay will Will actually absorb that. Uh, they come in all kinds of different shapes, different animals. I have an entire menagerie um, of different animals that I like to use. This guy is one that my Instagram followers voted to name Bubble Butt uh, because he blows bubbles out of his butt when you pour tea on him. And so as you can imagine, having a tea tray like this that's going to catch any tea or water that you're pouring is really, really handy if you have a tea pet. Um, that's kind of the main reason why I use them. Um, if I wasn't using a tea pet, it's honestly not super necessary, but I really like having a tea pet with me when I'm having tea that I can pour tea on, so the tea tray kind of just makes that a lot easier. Another thing that's nice to have, but not entirely necessary, is a tahi or a tea presentation vessel. Basically, this is just like a bowl for you to put your tea leaves in. Um, I find it's easier to kind of weigh your leaves on this um, and then use that to put them into your gaiwan or your teapot. You can definitely get them really inexpensively from a lot of different places like Yunnan Sourcing, um, but they are nice to have. That being said, you don't need to have one that's actually made for that purpose. Um, like these are ones I use a lot and they're actually just little dip bowls that I bought from Home Goods. Um, so you can definitely use your imagination to use materials that are readily available for you as substitutes for some of these things. In case you didn't know, I have started a Patreon for this channel and my blog. It's a way for my followers to help support me in making even more educational tea content. One of the perks that patrons receive is being able to attend virtual tea gatherings that we do on Zoom every other month. Our next one will be held in early October and I'll be sending out samples of a special aged Liu on tea uh, to my supporters for us to be able to drink them together. Um, so I think that's going to be a really cool experience. If you would like to partake, make sure to sign up as a patron before September 15th um, so that way we have time for the tea to get to you. I hope that this video will help you get started brewing tea gung fu style. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm working on putting together a shopping list to try to design the least expensive gung fu tea set that I can um, on Amazon in a way that just I thought it might help make things a little bit more accessible for people who are just getting started. So I'll be sure to make a video once I finish putting that together. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.